Hey Budget Gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as I prep the front walkway bed and get it ready to be planted with some beautiful annuals. So let's go. I want to quickly go over the scope of this project. This flower bed has a lot of pansies in it that overwintered and they look beautiful in the spring, but it's going to be getting really hot and I have plenty of annuals I want to plant in here. So at this point, I really need to weed out some of the pansies to make room for my summer annuals. So I'm going to just be going and cleaning out all those pansies, yet leaving a few of them behind. That's going to be one major task. I also really need to edge this flower bed just to give it that nice clean look. And then finally, I just have to get going and plant those annuals in here. This section is about five feet by 10 feet. It is full of pansies, which overwintered. And they look beautiful, but it's time for them to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out a majority of the pansies and clean it out and get it ready for a bunch of pots that I have placed in the center of this bed. Up along the walkway is about 20 feet by three feet. And there are still more pansies that need to get pulled out. There are also some bloodroot which I'm just gonna leave and they will eventually fizzle during the summer. And then the, finally, there are a bunch of spring bulbs in here. I will leave the foliage of these spring bulbs here because they just need to keep feeding the bulbs for next season. But I will work around everything and the grass definitely needs to be edged. There are pansies growing inside the grass. It's crazy how many pansies drop their seeds. So I just need to really just get going on working on this bed and working around all of the spring bulbs and leaving them there. I'm standing on my front porch, so it's at the end of the front walkway, and this area right here that we're looking at is approximately 12 feet by 15 feet. It's a big space, and a major reason why I don't have it filled in the center is because that's where my septic is. But all around the septic are a whole bunch of Stelladora daylilies. They definitely need to be divided. I will be working on that this fall. And I'm just going to keep weeding in this section here. The leopard's vein has gone by. It is beautiful. I can't wait to divide that as well and move that around my yard. Lots of edging to be done here as well. In order to do the edging of my flower beds, I use a tool called a half moon edger. It works out really well. And I end up taking whatever I'm edging out and that will go in my compost pile and break down over time. And I'm not making a huge cut in the lawn. I'm just doing, I'm edging just enough to make it a nice clean cut, but I also don't want to make it too much work. So I don't cut out too much of the grass. So the edging is all done for all around this big, huge flower bed here. And I've also started weeding. And my strategy with the pansies is I'm going to weed out all the pansies that are on the perimeter of the flower bed both on the outside as well as the inside. And when I say the flower bed, I guess I'm talking this area here where the septic is. I don't want any pansies here. And up along the walkway, the main walkway part, I also don't want any pansies up along there. And I'll show you the progress of what I'm planning to do with the rest of the pansies that I do have. This is the main section where I have most of my pansies, and I'm going to leave just a one foot section on the perimeter of this bed here. And in the center part, I'm going to dig out the rest of the pansies, and that's where I'm going to put some pots. And up along the walkway is where I've been weeding and just cleaning out these beds. Again, I want to leave the perennials in here so that they can just over time grow and feed the bulbs and the roots for next year. And right here, I did find a stray perennial. It's a blue lobelia. I will be digging that out and just putting it as part of my plant sale. For the most part though, I am getting rid of a lot of the weeds and all the pansies here. So let me just finish up with the weeding and I'll show you what's next after that. So I was able to get some help from my husband and in this bed right here, We've gone ahead and weeded the center part of the bed. And you can see there are emitter lines. There's five of them. That's where the pots are gonna go. We're gonna change it so that it has emitter tubing. 
in each of the pots rather than the bug caps that we currently have there. And along the walkway, notice how nice the edging looks and everything has been weeded. Again, I've kept the muscari as well as the bloodroot and notice that I did not cut them back yet. And I also have a bunch of Dusty Miller that overwintered, which is really nice. I have nice big clumps, probably about six of them in this bed. On a cooler day, I'll go ahead and move those around. It's 90 degrees today. I'm not gonna bother doing that just quite yet. The center is all nice and clean where the septic system is. Also around the pond, weeding has been done. And I also deadheaded the pansies just to clean things up. Underneath these rhododendrons, there was a, a little bit of weeds, weed pressure there. So that's been weeded as well. We're on day two of this project. It got way too hot and sunny out here along the front walkway. So in the afternoon, I moved to a different bed and worked over there, but I'm back. So I wanted to go over the plan of planting flowers up along the walkway, as well as some pots in this area. What we have here are a bunch of flowers that I started from seed. So we have a couple of different colors of lobelia up here along the front. There are some white ones and some light blue. We also have dahlias that I stored the tubers over the winter and look how beautiful they are. They're all blooming right now. So I have five pots of dahlias here. Over here we have Dusty Miller and then we have a perennial, a whole bunch of perennials right here. These are the Lance Leaf Coreopsis. I did not start these from seed this year. These are from two years ago and I did them in winter sown jugs. So they were started from seeds but they were done through the winter sowing method. And they, from what I've read, they are a short lived perennial. We'll see how long they live for, but at least for this season, they will give some nice color. Hopefully they return next year. I also plan on collecting the seeds of these so I can winter sow them again. These are not blooming yet, but hopefully they should take off once they're in the ground. These are the Ford Hook Snapdragons. And over here are some alyssum. They're the Tiny Tim variety and they look a little tired and sad. I'm gonna give them some fertilizer, and if I need to, I will shear them back a little bit just so that they put out some new growth. Finally, over in the front down here, we have a whole bunch more of the lobelia. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the placement of what I'm thinking, and then I'm gonna start planting them. What we're looking at here are some Dusty Miller plants that overwintered and it's very sporadic, the ones that overwintered. So I'm gonna look at the pattern and fill in the spaces where there are empty spaces where the Dusty Miller did not overwinter. And I'll show you what it looks like in the end. I got all the Dusty Miller planted. I put just a small amount of slow release fertilizer in each hole. And I also watered all the Dusty Miller with miracle Grow mixed in in the water. And the pattern is, there are dusty miller on either side of the blood root. Now keep in mind that the blood root will die back fairly shortly, as well as the spring bulbs here, which are grape hyacinth. And that will be okay. We just wanna make sure that we're filling in spots as we go along. So I am next going to plant the alyssum towards the front of the bed. And I think I'm gonna alternate the alyssum with the blue lobelia. When it comes to spacing my alyssum, I basically dug a hole and I'm just doing it the length of my shovel that I'm using here. And what I'm planning on doing is planting my blue lobelia in between each of these alyssum. I have so many alyssum and so many lobelia that I started from seed. So I figure I might as well pack it in here and make it look really nice. And I'm just putting a small amount of my slow release fertilizer in each hole. I have drip irrigation in this bed, so these plants will get plenty of water. The root system looks really good on my alyssum, so I'm not gonna play around with the roots at all. And I'm just planting it as deep as the bottom leaves of my alyssum. Backfilling, pushing down a little bit, and good enough. I'll do one more. 
I could put water in here, but I noticed that the drip irrigation ran last night, so it's still pretty wet in the hole. And I'm going to give some water. This has miracle Grow mixed into it. I usually give all my annuals miracle Grow about once a week. And I try to pick the same day or same time frame. So I do this every weekend, either on a Saturday or a Sunday. The alyssum has all been planted. And next, what I'm going to do is plant the lobelia. I'll show you how I do a couple of those, and then I'll plant the rest. So I'm just going to plant the lobelia in between each of the alyssum. Dig my hole, just a pinch of the Osmocote slow release fertilizer. The lobelia really need to get in the ground. They definitely are getting a little pot bound with their roots. I'm just going to tease the roots a little bit. I'm going to plant it as deep as possible up to the bottom of the plant, backfill, push down, fluff it up just a little bit, and give it some water. I'll do one more for you. Dig our hole. Pinch of the slow release fertilizer. It's gonna look so pretty, the blue and the white. Loosen the roots a little bit, plant it. As the summer goes on, I most likely will need to shear back both the alyssum as well as the lobelia just to keep them looking nice and tidy. So there we go. Add a little bit of water. I love how vibrant and blue the lobelia looks with the white alyssum. And they're gonna take right off over time. The coreopsis is gonna get planted behind each of the clumps of bloodroot. I figure the bloodroot will die back within the next month and I'll need some color there. So I might as well just put the nice yellow coreopsis in those places. In a previous video, I showed you where I dug up these coreopsis. They were in a shady spot on the side of my house, the north side. So it's nice to get free perennials. And I winter sowed these a few years ago. I just didn't know where I was gonna place them. From what I've read, they like to be deadheaded and they should bloom for almost two months, which is really nice. Probably, they're blooming right now, so they'll give me two months of nice interest in this bed. I normally would place a uh, 10, 10, 10 around all my perennials in the springtime, but for right now, I'm just using the Osmocote slow release fertilizer. Give it some water, and that's it. Done. The coreopsis are in, and I think they look wonderful. So if you can imagine, the coreopsis is only going to get bigger, and also the dusty miller that is right near the coreopsis, those will get much bigger, and those will branch out. So this space is really going to fill in. Next, we're going to plant the snapdragons, and I'm just planting on sprinkling them throughout just so that they fill in this spot. So I have one coreopsis here. I have another one over here. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to plant three snapdragons. So I'm going to plant one here, one around here, knowing that this is going to die back, and one over here. And I realize that I'm planting it in a line. A lot of times when we're gardening, we don't want to plant things in lines. But I think it's going to look fine because I want to work around what's already around this area. In the end, after I plant these groupings of three in between each set of Coreopsis plants, if I decide I want to put some more snapdragons sprinkled into this space, I'll do that. But I figured this is a good starting point.
they're not blooming yet, but some of them are budded up. And once they're in the ground with some nice irrigation and fertilizer, they're going to take right off. They're a mixed color, so it'll be a surprise to see what shows up where for colors. And clearly I can see that this plant, as well as this plant, they were pinched back at one point or the other, and this one wasn't. But what happens with snapdragons is they typically will branch out on their own anyway. So I'm not too worried about the ones that are not pinched. I'm going to give it a little bit of water. And time to plant the rest of them. I have five pots here. I only had four of these small ones. What I'm going to do is in these small pots, I'm going to plant the light pink dahlias. And in this one larger pot, I'm going to plant the dark pink dahlia. I filled each of these pots with potting mix that I already pre-mixed on my own. I have a video that shows you how to make your own potting mix. It's a lot cheaper than buying potting mix. Once the time comes to put irrigation into each of these pots, I'll show you what we'll be doing for that. So let's go ahead and plant one of the smaller pots right now. Before I plant this, I wanted to point out one thing. Right over here is a blossom that's already gone by. And if I don't pull this off, what's going to happen is it's going to tell the plant to go to seed. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is just pinch off this blossom very carefully. Just like that. The other thing I could do is I could clip it off just like that. That just keeps it tidy. It also tells the plant to keep making buds and not go to seed. So I'm going to carefully take the plant out of the pot and it's actually not too pot bound or root bound, which is nice. So I'm just going to carefully tease apart some of the roots and I'm going to make a nice space in the center where I can plant this. I'm going to check it for the depth and actually it's pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some slow release fertilizer in here. The soil is dry, so I'm going to add some water. And now I'm going to backfill with more potting mix or soil that I have on hand. And push down. These dahlias were started from seed probably two years ago. And when I dug up the dahlias, I stored the dahlia tubers in my garage, which stays between 30 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit during the winter months. And I stored them in peat moss that was moistened just slightly. And then I pre-sprouted the dahlia tubers probably about two months ago. And don't they look wonderful? I'm so glad that they're already blooming. Okay, this one's done. I'm going to go ahead and do all the other pots, and then I'm going to show you where they're going to get placed. And this project is officially done. My husband helped me with it. It took us both four hours combined between both of us. That includes the weeding and pulling out plants that we didn't want in this bed, some perennials. And then on top of that, adding all the annuals and potting up the five dahlias. But I am really pleased with the progress that we made. And at this point, there's really not much more that needs to be done to this bed. The only other things that I'm gonna do is once the blood root has gone by, 
I will cut those back. And also, once the grape hyacinth go by, I'll just clean up whatever mess is left over with the leaves. But I am going to leave all those leaves on there while they're still photosynthesizing and feeding the bulbs and the plants. But I'm really happy with the colors that have been put in this bed. I really can't wait to see what these Ford Hook Snapdragons look like. I have no idea what colors to expect, so that will be a fun little surprise. And over in this section of the bed, I did not have a chance to cut the box, to trim the boxwood. It's been way too hot. I don't feel comfortable doing that. So if I have time during the week, I will trim the boxwood back. And in the center part of this bed, it's nice and empty. And I still need to figure out if I'm going to put a few pots in here with my vegetables like I normally do. I'll keep you posted on that. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And tell a friend or two. If they're really into gardening or learning about gardening, saving money with gardening, I'd love for you to be able to share this channel with them. Be sure to follow the progress on all of this, plus all the other projects I still have yet to do. I still have a lot of annuals I'm going to plant. I can't wait. But until then, make it a great day with gardening.